how do bridge adjusters work on a bass anyway? What's going on? It's Jason Heath, and I get a lot of questions about what these things are on my base anyway. Well, they are bridge adjusters, and they are made of many materials. Mine happened to be this plastic. I used to have aluminum bridge adjusters. You'll see wood bridge adjusters, but they are on your base for a specific reason, and that is to adjust your bridge. There are a lot of ways you can screw things up with bridge adjusters, so in this video, we're going to take a look at how they work, why we need them, and how to dial them in to get your best possible setup. A lot of people think that bridge adjusters work kind of like electric base bridges and how you can move them up or down. Uh, that's not really the case because what happens is when you turn one side, that will move the bridge up or down, but will also change the angle of the bridge. So you're actually going to shift your action slightly to the left or slightly to the right. So you want to make sure that you bring both sides up or down the same amount. And that's why a couple of different luthiers have put dots on my bridges. So I have these white dots here and the other side, I have have these red dots. And if you start uh, and bring them down, uh, you don't have to worry about your tuning, you will go flat, but if you bring them up, you're gonna wanna loosen your strings a little bit just so that you're not causing unnecessary strain on the bass. My bridge adjusters move pretty easily, but not all of them do, so you may need some sort of rag to get them going. And if you have the aluminum ones, I recommend taking a pencil or trying to make some little mark so that you can keep them in alignment. I found that doing a half turn is the best way to do it, so just do one half turn on this side and then one half turn on this side, and you're gonna check and see how things feel. And of course, your bass is going to be going out of tune, so when you get to where you think it might be good, uh, you can get in tune and test it out. And that brings me to the next thing. How do you know how high or low your bridge should be? And that is a subjective thing for sure. We bass players play all different kinds of styles. And in general, if I'm playing pizzicato or I'm playing solo, I'm going to have my strings a little bit lower than if I'm playing with the San Francisco Symphony or some sort of heavy arco playing where there's a lot of verticality in the bow stroke. So as an example, I'm going to bring my bridge even lower. This is going to be way too low for my playing. I'm playing with the symphony tomorrow, so we'll have to bring this back up. This is as low as my bridge goes. Let me tune my bass. You also want to keep an eye on your bridge angle uh, and make sure that it's staying 90 degrees to the body. That can uh, shift around a little bit if you're really making radical changes and tightening and loosening your strings. Just something to be uh, cognizant of. Okay, so this height is actually awesome for pizzicato. If I was gonna go play a jazz gig, which I never do, uh, I would use this height. This is also a nice height for solo playing. <laughs> And this is again a height that if I was playing a recital, that would be awesome for. And that's one of the benefits of having bridge adjusters. You can make those kind of adjustments because our instrument is so big, it changes a lot with temperature and setup needs differ depending on the type of playing art we're doing. This is not great for symphonic playing for me though because you're getting that horrific sound. That is called bottoming out, and all that means is that the string is slapping against the fingerboard. Now, that can happen if your bow technique needs a little bit of dialing in. If you are angled way over uh, towards the C bout here or this way, the string can actually vibrate and whack into the fingerboard. There's probably a whole setup video that we could do on that. Let me know in the comments if you want to see something like that. <laughs> Okay, so definitely too low and on the G-string side, too low. Now, what I don't want to do is crank this up and then leave these all the same because that's going to put undue strain. It's going to actually move my strings over and everything that my luthier has done to meticulously sculpt this so that the strings feel good in the left hand and they don't bottom out when it's at the right height, that's all going out the window and you're possibly causing some other problems as well. So I'm going to bring these up now by a half a turn and before before I do that, I'm going to just detune my bass a little bit. Doesn't have to be crazy. And we're just going to bring them up. Mm -hmm. 
And I'm just trying to get this reasonably in tune so that it feels realistic. This is feeling a bit better. And again, solo playing, this would be great. Orchestral playing, this would be great. But if I'm playing really heavy on the G string, I'm still getting that bottoming out. And that's just not gonna be acceptable. I want to be able to really put that weight into the string and not have it uh, squawk on me. So it's possible that I could get some setup work done on my bass to make this, because these three strings feel pretty good. This feels a little bit bottoming out, uh, so I am gonna bring it up, but uh, I could see the next time I bring this into my luthier having uh, them play around with the setup. I also have this extended fingerboard, and I think that causes some problems with bottoming out, so I need to sometimes, for orchestral playing, raise them even higher than I might if I didn't have the extended fingerboard. It's just my theory, though. Here's where I started at the beginning of this video, and this is what I'm going to go to rehearsal with tomorrow. This is, again, another half turn. Half turns are great for me, uh, but this, now, I'm not bottoming out, and I want my action to be as low as possible without bottoming out. That's my general rule of thumb for the type of playing I'm doing. Now I'm not bottoming out. Now, if I'm a little bit sloppy with my bowing, I can, I can get it to buzz. Even the most perfect setup, you can probably get it to buzz if you try hard enough, but I'm not gonna play like a pig like that. This is about the most bow weight I'm gonna use, and it's not bowing on the G string, and in a good setup generally, if it's not bowing on the G string, it's not gonna bow on the other strings as well. Now, just for fun, let's go a little bit too high. Make sure you're turning them the correct direction, so you might even wanna write down what that direction is, so it is to the right for me. Okay, now we are one turn higher than I had set up. And feels great if I'm not playing closed notes. And it feels okay, but I'm already starting to feel like I'm having to work a little too hard in the left hand. And that's what setup is. It is this delicate balance between the needs of the right hand and the needs of the left hand. For this, I could go and play this in a rehearsal, and that's fine, but I can feel that I'm gonna get tired this way. And sometimes you're not gonna know until you live with a setup for a little while. That's the beauty of bridge adjusters, is that you can make these tweaks, and as the weather changes, it's just very easy to adjust to get it dialed into what you need. So this is too high, and I know if I keep cranking it up, it's gonna get ridiculous. So I'm gonna bring it back down to the white dots on the other side of the bridge and make sure I turn the right way. I just turned the wrong way. <laughs> so I like to line these up. These are not the prettiest dots I've ever seen in my life, but they will work. And just making some kind of mark before you start poking around down there, that's a smart move. That's a bit about bridge adjusters. Thanks for watching and check out what we've got linked up.